In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple web page about Taylor Swift. It's going to be created in Adobe Dreamweaver and it's going to look very similar to the one that you see on your screen right now. Before you get started today, make sure you've gone into Curriculum Drive and copied the Taylor Swift web page folder over to your account. This folder has in it all the required pictures and information you're going to need to put this web page together. Once you've done that, you can pop into Dreamweaver and begin today by creating a new HTML document. When it first loads up, we do need to give it a title at the top, and because we're making a page about Taylor Swift, our title will be Taylor Swift. Next thing, we'll head down to our page properties and get our background colors and fonts set up. We will be changing our page font first of all, so click on this drop down list. There are a heap of presets in here that you can use, but what we're going to do is choose our own fonts today. So we're going to scroll right to the bottom of that list and select Manage Fonts. That pops a box where you can search for some web fonts through here. There's some really nice looking fonts in there, so take the time to have a look through there if you would like. But what we're going to do today is go over to the Custom Font Stacks. And from this, we're going to look down the right hand side here. We're going to scroll all the way down until we get to the letter V, and we find the word Verdana. This is probably one of the most easiest to read fonts on, an, on a screen. So what we're going to do is click the double arrows and put it into our font stack. If for some reason the people looking at your website don't have Verdana installed on their computer, we need to have a backup font that they can use. And we're going to go to the letter T here, and we're going to choose this one. Trebuchet MS, I think it's called. Let's click, click the double arrows, that can be our backup font. And if we have to choose one more backup font, I'd probably pick Arial. It's a simple font that's pretty much installed on every computer, so let's push that in as our third font. Okay, when you're done, click Done. And from the drop-down list, you can see you've got those three fonts now in our font stack list. So we're going to choose that. Hopefully Vedana will be our number one font. Okay, we don't need to click on any of those boxes over on the right-hand side. The size of our font should be size 12. Our text color should be black. So let's click on the black. And for this one, we're not going to have a background color. You could come in here and choose a background color if you wanted to. But instead, if you go to Browse, we're going to include a background image today. In the Taylor Swift web page folder, inside Images, we've got this nice girly background with a few love hearts on it. When you click OK, you'll see that background appear. OK, so that's our page property set up. The next thing we need to do is insert a table. OK, so pop over to your panel over here, the common panel is the one we want selected here. Now you might be on media or one of the other ones, we need to go back to common and make sure you insert a table first of all. The table we'll be putting in today is five rows by one column. The table width is 960 pixels. The border thickness, cell padding and cell spacing are all set to zero. So once you've got those, click OK. Now be careful, don't click anywhere just yet. You will see an invisible table pretty much appear on your page here. But before we click anywhere, you need to go down the bottom and align that table in the center of your page. Okay. Next thing we can do so we can make this table visible is click in the first row of that table and drag down to the bottom row. And in your properties box down the bottom, change your background color to white. Okay, that just makes our table a little bit easier to see. Now we've got our table set up, it's time to insert some information into here. Now in the first row, I'd like to put in a header for our web page. Now you're going to have to go over to Fireworks today and make yourself a header. This is one I made previously. This is 960 by 150 pixels. Okay, so when you make a new document, make sure you've got 960 by 150 at 72 resolution. Click OK and you'll get a strip where you can make a header. Once you finish making your header that says Taylor Swift, make sure you save it as a JPEG image. So save as, make sure it's a JPEG image, and save it in your images folder. Okay, you can see mine's already saved in there. Once it's saved in there, you can head back to Dreamweaver, click in the first row, and insert yourself an image. I'm going to put that header in. Okay, that's really simple. In the second row of our table today, we're going to put a horizontal rule. So over in your insert panel, 
put a horizontal rule in. When you click out of the box, it looks like that horizontal rule disappears, but it's actually still there. You can only just see it. Now in the third row of our table, we're going to put some information about Taylor Swift. In the Taylor Swift webpage folder, you will see an info document. And when you open that up, we've got a bit of information here that you can copy and paste into Dreamweaver. Okay, so you don't have to do all that writing. I've done the hard work for you. All you need to do is copy and paste that writing in. And when it comes in, it's not formatted correctly. What we need to do is get some paragraphs sorted out here. They don't look very neat at the moment. So I'm going to press delete and then oops and then enter. Delete, enter. And now I've got better looking paragraphs. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is split this row in half. Because what I want is text on one side, and then on the right hand side I want to have a picture of Taylor Swift. So while I've clicked inside this cell, I'm going to go down the bottom, and there's a little button down here called split cells. And we want to split it into two columns. We'll click OK. So we've now got another column over here that we can pick up and drag around. And what we're going to do is put a picture of Taylor Swift in there. Before we do that, what we want to do is get this little mouse cursor that's flashing here into the center of the box so our picture comes in centered. And it's a little bit tricky in Dreamweaver. What we need to do is pop down to our CSS tab on the left hand side of our properties box. Pop over to where it says targeted rule and we're just going to make a new inline style. And once we click center, what that does is centers our cursor in the middle of the page there. So now that's ready for our picture to come in. So let's go and insert an image and you'll see the Taylor Swift picture inside your images folder. When you click OK it should fit in nicely. I've resized it to the perfect size so you don't need to touch the sizes. One trick with Dreamweaver and one very important rule is never resize using these handles in Dreamweaver. It will slow down your web page and it will distort your image. So never do that. You will lose big marks for that. Now another thing I'd like to do in this um, row, this text is a little bit squished up. I think it needs a little bit more line spacing. So click back in this cell with the text and pop over to your properties panel here on the right hand side. And if we click on the text here, we can scroll down a little bit until we see line height. If you click on where it says normal, we're going to change it into pixels. Okay, at the moment set to zero, that's what it's going to look like. If we change it to 12 pixels, the same size as our font, okay, it's still going to be fairly squished. That's like single line spacing. What we want to do with that line height is probably make it one and a half line spacing. So that'll be 18 pixels. And when we click back in here now, we've got some line spacing going on. If you think that's a little bit too big, you can always go back and change that line height just to 16 or 17 pixels. Any of those sort of sizes are going to look good. I think I'll just leave it at 18 pixels for now. Okay, so finishing off down the bottom here, we've got this last line of text. It says click here to go to the official Taylor Swift website. What I'm going to do is turn this into a hyperlink. So when we click on the words click here, it will take us off to Taylor Swift's actual website. So I've highlighted the words click here, I'm going to pop up to our insert panel and I'm going to click on the word hyperlink. And just where it says link here, I need you to write in http colon forward slash forward slash www.taylorswift.com And the next one where it says target, I want you to choose blank for that and what that means is when we click on that link, Taylor Swift's web page will, our website will open up in a blank tab or a brand new tab. We'll click OK. You can see that that's turned into a hyperlink now. In the second last row of our table, we're going to put a horizontal rule in, just to rule off that section. And in the very last row, what I need you to do is put in a copyright statement. So we're going to write copyright. We're going to insert a character and put in the copyright symbol. We'll put in the year, which is 2015, and we're going to put in your name. Okay, so put your first and last name in there. Now, it looks a bit silly over there and being the same size as our body text, so I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to go down to the CSS tab again in my properties panel. 
and I'm going to choose a new inline style from that drop down box. What I'm going to do is change the size of that font down to size 9 and I'm also going to center it. It looks a little bit better if it's smaller and in the center of the page. And that's basically it. That's how our web page is going to look. So you can go to Save As. I've just called mine Example because it is an example, but you'll give it a better name. Probably something like Taylor Swift or Index. When you've saved it, you can pop up to your Preview button up here and you can preview it in a web browser. I've got Google Chrome or Internet Explorer. So I might have a look in Google Chrome first and see how it looks. And that looks pretty nice. Everything loads up. Text and the picture fit in fairly well. And our copyright looks good at the bottom. So that's how you make a very simple Taylor Swift web page in Dreamweaver.